Hi, I'm your host, Vasco Duart. Welcome to the Scrum Master Toolbox podcast, where we share tips and tricks from Scrum Masters around the world. Every day, we bring you inspiring answers to important questions that all Scrum Masters face day after day. Hello, everybody. Welcome to one more week of the Scrum Master Toolbox podcast. And uh, this week, we have with us Richard Lizama. Hi, Richard. Welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. So uh, before becoming a Scrum Master, Richard spent time as a college counselor, then a small business owner, and then a tech support rep. Uh, But once he found Scrum and Agile, he knew it was where he needed to be. Uh, That's great. That's an inspiring story of of, uh, how you came to to know about Agile. Uh, How did you actually start as a Scrum Master, Richard? It's an interesting story. Like you said, I have an unconventional background, as, as I like to call it. But one day, uh, I, you know, as a, the small business owner, I was reading a story on LinkedIn, and it said something about, you know, uh, about jobs to have uh, that, you know, is one of those articles that you would read on LinkedIn where you're kind of like, huh, um, what's a cool job to have that pays a lot and requires, uh, you know, no formal degree. And so I read that. And, you know, I think in the top 10 was Scrum Master. And I read the description and I thought to myself, wow, I, I could do that. Um, and, and this was, you know, actually, uh, yeah, when I was a small business owner, was towards the end of, of kind of uh, uh, one of, or, or, it was near the end of that part of my career. And, um, and so I read that. And again, I thought, wow, I could totally do that. But then I started to look into it more and I thought, okay, there's no way I'll be able to do that. Job descriptions all say years and years of experience and um, degrees, uh, you know, the the STEM degree and and certifications. I I peeled back the layers of the onion and I thought probably won't be something that happens to me. Um, But the unconventional background, I got a degree in political science. From there, I was working for uh, Texas State University as a as a, a, a counselor in financial aid. Um, I came into a little bit of money, and, and in, when I was in high school, I, uh, I I was a radio, television, film major, so a lot of a lot of you know filming, um, television shows, and and and, and local stuff. Um, and when I came into that little bit of money, I thought, well. Uh, I had some friends that were successful in the wedding photography business. And I thought, Hey, do people want their weddings videoed? And, and I asked my friends and they said, I get that question all the time. So um, that little bit of money I had I invested in the small business and I was doing that professionally for about 10 years. And then I realized this isn't, I'm burned out and this isn't really sustainable. And um, you know, I'm way behind on where I should be in, in financially in life. Um, I'm going to go back and, and work for a company, you know, the, the, the business owner thing to me, it's, it's the grass is greener. Um, and, and it really takes, uh, somebody who really wants to take it to the next level to be a business owner. And I, I didn't think that I wanted to do it anymore. So I was like, I'll just get in at any company, any tech company here in Austin at the ground floor, which, um, technical support that seemed to be what I applied for that would give me the most responses. So got an interview with the company in Austin to do technical support. Um, I, I, I got the position. And then from there, I thought to myself, okay, you know, just, just do you, Richard, and you will get out of technical support in due time. Just, just pay your dues. And, and I worked and I, I, I worked hard at technical support is one of the hardest jobs I've ever had. And um, positions started opening up and um, I, somebody told me, hey, uh, engineering is going to do a scrum master position and their only requirement is that you have great soft skills. And I thought, what? So I kind of thought back to that article that I'd read and I was like, this is actually something that could be reality for me. I applied for it. Um, I felt like I got put through the ringer in the interview and um, I walked out of there thinking I did not get this. And I, I remember going to a wedding that weekend and just letting loose, you know, and I was like, well, you know, come Monday, I'll go back to the drawing board. 
and uh, Monday morning comes and um, I find out from a friend, uh, they go, they're going to make you an offer. And I was like, just, I almost started crying if I'm being honest, because I thought to myself, I'm never going to have to answer a phone again. And my customers will be the people that I work with day in and day out. It's not going to be somebody calling in asking for help um, or, or a bride looking to book me for their wedding date or a, a student coming in needing help. These are going to be people that I uh, you know, get to coach, mentor, teach um, day in and day out. So uh, long story, uh, that's probably the best I could shorten it down to. But, um, but yeah, I think it's important to kind of say, you know, it's, it's to, to tell my story and, and you know, uh, get into something that has literally changed my life. And, and, it, and I didn't think that I end up being where I'm at right now. Absolutely. Great story. Definitely. Uh, also inspiring because, of course, you took a leap uh, into a completely different world. Uh, I'm sure you knew how to work with people. I mean, you had been working yeah. with people in all kinds of jobs before, but uh, working it pe with people is one thing. Working with engineers is another. <laughs> it is. You're absolutely right. And I feel in, in some weird way, I feel like every position I had prepped me for being a scrum master in some way, or at least that, that's at least the way that I... I, I felt about it and still feel about it. Um, you know, college counselor, you deal with like uh, students. I kind of look at them as stakeholders. Um, and then being a business owner, working with a, a, a bride and a groom to, to, to really figure out how they want their day to be filmed. That's product. Yeah. And, absolutely. and then technical support. This is uh, dealing with the, you know, the end user and getting feedback. And, and so, um, I looked at it like that going in and I still look at it like that today, but you're right. The engineering, the developers, and, and maybe we're going to talk about game. that because now we talk yeah. about failure, right? We yeah. talk about the a sure. story of failure and, and, uh, we know how hard it is to work with, uh, engineers. Uh, I mean, all of us are scrum masters listening to this show. If we're not scrum masters, we're probably engineers ourselves. So we know how hard it can be. So share that story with us, Richard. Um, working with, with engineers. Uh, yeah, the story of failure. Oh, the story of failure. So I, I fail all the time. You know, I, I think that the, what's what's taught me the most lessons is the failure. I, I hear all the time, fail fast. And I hear all the time, learn fast. And I think that they're, you know, one and the same, depending on how you want to spin it. But I, ha I have so many stories about failure and I'm not afraid to talk about it. You know, uh, I think that being able to be open and talk to folks about failure, uh, peers and mentors, um, has kind of helped me wrap my head around some situations I wasn't necessarily able to figure out when the so failure was happening. Let's dive into one of those situations, Richard. Sure. Uh, walk us through, you know, the the how how it all developed. We don't need to jump straight into the end. Walk us through how that process developed. Yeah. Um, I, I remember my first few uh, weeks on on the job as a scrub master. I worked with some development teams that were, you know, they knew what they were doing more than than, than myself. Uh, and it, you know, you go into it without the the proper training. You just, you know, you just have the soft skills. Um, I found myself working with those development teams and and just kind of sitting back and observing. Um, but then I started to lead them, not necessarily in a scrum way, but in a way that I thought would be, you know, uh, just kind of good, uh, according to what I thought. Um, it was, it kind of had more to, of, of just kind of letting the team do their thing. Um, and, and so in the beginning, you know, I didn't really, you know, I honestly, I mean, I didn't read the scrum guide. I didn't, I didn't read any of that. I, I just kind of hopped in. Um, so I was sort of letting the team just do their own thing, um, as you should, but I was, I didn't know that I was actually kind of fostering anti-patterns that the teams were doing. Uh, and, and, you know, it's, it's, it was really easy for me to fall in and just say, Hey, I'm a scrum master. I'm here. Um, and, and there's so, there was so much more to it than that. And, and the next thing, you know, um, we, we had an agile coach come in. And um, which, you know, he referred me to you, uh, Leland. Um, Leland came in and I started to realize everything that I was failing at. Like it just was staring me right in the face. So 
guy, we, we went to lunch all the time and I was talking scrum with him without even knowing it. But when it comes to the team, like when I started to take a lot of the things that Leland was teaching me and really starting to apply it, there were times where the teams were like, where did this come from? You know, we spent three months doing it the other way. Uh, why is Richard speaking up all of a sudden? And 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 that I kind of did myself a disservice by not really doing the Scrum Master position its due diligence and 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 researching and 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 going in to like ask more questions, uh, seek more um, guidance. But I'll never forget that daily Scrum where I, the first day I just kind of went in there and said, "Hey, is there anything that we're blocked on?" Um, and then the, 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 the developers reply of, um, we would say that if we were, you know, and I was just like, oh man, I felt like I messed up in that moment. But the more I thought about it, like, you know, the more I thought, okay, I, I should have explained why I'm speaking up all of a sudden with the team. And I went in, I felt bad the rest of the day, but here's what I love about daily scrum. When you fail the first day as a scrum master, you have the next day to make up for it. So I hopped in the next day and I said, Hey y'all. Um, and I, you know, I'd been doing other things in the background too, that were, that were new to them. And I said, Hey, here's why I'm starting to speak up more in these calls. And here's why I'm asking these questions. And, and, and that got me everywhere. So they started to understand and, and it started to become less skeptical on their part and more welcoming to learn. And that was somewhere where I failed and really kind of had a chance to ponder on it and get better. Yeah, I really like what you said that uh, the, the thing with the daily scrum is that if you screw up one day, you, you still have the, the next day to, to make it up. Yeah, and, and on top of that, we had, you know, uh, what, what is it, the, the saying, a good scrum master has uh, one, or sorry, a good scrum master has two or three teams. Great scrum master has one. And I, I, unfortunately, I was never really afforded that luxury until now. Um, but when the organization needs you and they, and they have you at the base level facilitate um, four or more teams due to some, you know, uh, some situations that didn't last very long. And that's what happened to me my first week as a scrum master. So I just remember thinking to myself, you're going to screw up this first one. I remember dreading that first call. And I, I you know, um, and at this company, they, they would want the scrum master to facilitate. Like, okay, cool. First call was terrible. But by the time I got to that sixth daily scrum that day, it was, it was significantly better than the first. So I loved being able to, like, I failed four times that day. And then the fifth one got okay. And then the sixth one was actually pretty good. And then there I was able go. to run, run through the gauntlet. That's the attitude. That's yeah. the attitude. The next uh, that was a, a great, inspiring story, Richard. Thank you for sharing that with us. Monday is about what we learn from our obstacles and our failures. But tomorrow is Team Tuesday here on the Scrum Master Toolbox podcast. We explore teams and their journeys the habits they develop that threaten their performance, how each of our guests help their teams evolve, and the one key lesson they learned from that experience. We really hope you liked our show. And if you did, why not rate this podcast on Stitcher or iTunes? Share this podcast and let other Scrum Masters know about this valuable resource for their work. Remember that sharing is caring. 